Hiya, I'm Helen, one of the senior midwives here on the birth centre at UCH. Um, I'm going to be leading the antenatal video today, which we're going to do instead of antenatal classes. So the reason why we're not doing antenatal classes, as I'm sure you're well aware, is because of COVID-19. Um, just because we have to limit how much contact we're having as group sessions um, and how much contact we're having with yourselves coming into the hospital. Um, so first of all, I'm going to tell you how to contact us if you have any problems. The two main places that you can come and if you have any problems are MFAU, so Maternal and Fetal Assessment Unit, which is on level one at the hospital. I'm going to give you the number now, which is 0203 447 6141. Or the other number is the birth centre labour line, which you phone when you're in labour, which I will talk more about. But that number is 07 908 378 855. So first of all, I'm just going to tell, talk to you about the five reasons why you would phone when you need to come in. Um, and it's always really important that you do try and phone before you come in, just so that we can have the right member of staff, have you in the right place, and just make the whole, um, basically a whole thing of coming in as smooth as possible. <coughs> so when to phone, there's five reasons to phone. The first one's any bleeding. So bleeding in pregnancy is not normal. If you have um, what we call show, which can be bloody sort of like gooey mucus, that can be normal. However, if it's fresh red ble bleeding, you need to phone and come on into MFAU, so Maternal Fetal Assessment Unit. Reduce movements, so you need to keep an eye on movements all through pregnancy and also th all throughout labour. That is really important. So movements should not slow down, they should still be in the same regular pattern that your baby's always in. And if you're worried about reduced movements, you need to come in and you phone MFAU to do that. So you come in there, they'll do a trace of baby, make sure everything's okay. But just keep an eye on the movements all throughout pregnancy and throughout the labour. Another reason to phone, <coughs> excuse me, is SHROM. So SHROM is when spontaneous rupture of membranes. So that's when your waters have broken. Um, sometimes they can go like they do on TV, a big gush, and then they can go everywhere. Um, but sometimes it can be a bit of a trickle. So sometimes they can be a bit of a pop sensation. Some waters will come out. Then every time baby moves, some, a little bit more might come out. And they're the ones where a bit like, have their waters gone? Or is it a bit of discharge? They're the ones we're less sure that they've definitely gone. If you do think your water's gone, however, what I recommend doing is popping a pad in um, your underwear and then keeping an eye on the colour, if there's any smell, anything like that. Any pads you take off as well, make sure you bring them with you just so we can confirm exactly what the colour is and exactly what's on that pad and what's happened. Um, the time that the waters go is also quite important just so that we know exactly when the waters have gone. Because once your waters have gone, we've got to start a bit of a ticking clock just to see and um, make sure that you know the labour is progressing but also just because the risk of infection goes up and um, if your waters have gone for too long before your baby's born but if you phone maternal fetal assessment unit for however many weeks you are or anything like that they'll be able to advise you what to do and most often they'll invite you in to observe that next reason to phone is contractions so contractions they can sometimes start as tightenings so they can sometimes start as um, sort of period-like pains. Sometimes they're sort of like every one in 20 minutes, say one in 15 minutes, one in 10 minutes. If that is the case, I recommend just keeping a little eye on them. Don't obsess with counting them. Don't worry too much if they're that infrequent. It's just good that they've started to come. If you have any contractions before 37 weeks or with tightenings or any pains like that, keep an eye on them, but so phone MFAU, so Maternal Fetal Assessment Unit, because you will be invited in sooner, just because it's what we call a preterm labour, potentially. Sometimes it can be Braxton Hicks and you can go home again, but sometimes if the labour continues, we just want to make sure that you're in the right place and you're safe. If after 37 weeks, though, you're having these period-like pains and contractions, just keep a little eye on them to begin with. I'll talk about what you can do in early labour, but just keep an eye on those contractions. Um, after they've come sort of every couple of minutes and that's for a good couple of hours we would recommend you to phone us just so we can make contact with you we may not invite you in at that point because we may just say actually if you're coping at home you're best to stay at home for as long as possible but depending on how many babies you've had before and um, or how your pregnancy's gone everything like that when you phone us we can pull up your notes on the computer we can see all about your history and then we can um, advise you whether it's best to come in or whether, whether it's best to stay at home and also just listen to it we'll ask you about movements we'll ask you if your you know waters have gone just a whole history of how you're feeling and what, what's going on with yourself so with that if it's your second baby we do tend to invite you in sooner just because sometimes those labors can be quite quick but first time round we those labours, they can go on for quite a while. They can go on for, um, sometimes it can be a day or two of regular contractions. Um, sometimes they can stop and start, so you might have um, contractions for a couple of hours, then they ease off and then they come back again. But it's best just to keep a little eye on them, but don't obsess with counting them, because until they're coming every couple of minutes, lasting for a minute, um, and that's been for a good regular amount of time, that's the only time we would say for you to come in. But before that, just keep a little eye on them and make contact with us. 
Once we invite you in, we'll of course check you over, we'll do a full antenatal, see how you're feeling and then check what stage of labour you're at. That may not be an examination as such, we may just observe and ask you how you're feeling, but it will be a lot of um, how you feel and what, to, what you want to do and what your birth plan is. Um, another reason to phone is if you have any concerns or worries, because sometimes it's going to be like, oh, am I having some of these pains? My waters haven't quite gone yet, but I'm just not sure. If you're worried, just phone. So as I said, you can always phone the birth, birth centre labour line if your labour's been, if your uh, pregnancy has been normal and you're expecting them to come to the birth centre, or you can phone MFAU if you if you think it's anything else. Um, we try to keep the labour line just as those that are in labour or think that things are starting. But if, however, you do have a question, um, MFAU are more than happy. There's staff there all the time to answer any questions that you may have. So they're the things about when to phone, so the five things to phone for, bleeding, reduced movements, if your waters break, contractions or any worries or questions. The next thing to mention is just when you actually do come in, logistically getting here. So we don't have any parking on site. We are very central though, so there are lots of means of getting here, as you're probably finding out from when you come to your antenatal appointments. We're near the tube, lots of buses, but it's very different when you're in labour. So it's just worth, worth considering making a bit of a plan of how you're going to get here, who's going to be with you, which I'm going to talk about, but also how you're going to potentially get home as well afterwards. And also bear in mind that sometimes we invite you to come in, but you may not be quite an active labour, so we may suggest going home again. So that's why it's a thing of just make sure that you've got a bit of a plan of how you're getting here and potentially how you're getting home if you're not quite an active labour. Um, what we do, a lot of women do tend to do is taxis or they get a lift from someone just because it's easier to be dropped off and not have to worry about parking the car and things like if it's the middle of the night, of course you can't get the tube and other stuff like that. So just make sure you've got a bit, a bit of a plan, just what you're going to do when you're in labour and from where you live. So next I'm going to talk about pain relief options. So there are slight differences between pain relief options on the birth centre here and also on labour ward. So pain relief options here, we, um, we offer paracetamol, dihydrocodone in early labour. We have the gas in there, which is also called Ontinox, which is connected to the wall, so it's constant supply, and um, you can have that. We do recommend waiting until you're in active labour to have that, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, but we do recommend waiting until you're contracting really regularly, really strongly, they're not going away. The other option is the pool, which you can see here. And then the final option we have up here is a thing called pethidin. Now pethidin is like an opiate, it can make, it's an injection, we give it with an anti-sickness, but it can make you feel quite sleepy. It does work really well, but we tend to give it in early labour just to help you calm, be calm and relaxed. And then later on in labour, it may not be appropriate because it does go through to baby, so we sometimes have to think about the side effects for baby because they can come out a little bit sleepy um, and because the pethidin's gone through to their system. But it's just to be aware of what the options are up here. And obviously, individual cases with the midwife when you come in, they can discuss with you what they recommend or what you want to do or how you feel about certain pain reliefs. Um, but they're just the options that are up here. Now, labour wood is exactly the same option for pain relief. However, you can have an epidural down there. Now, with an epidural, um, it's basically an um, injection that goes into your back. They pass a catheter through to your spinal. So it's spinal fluid and then they put anaesthetic down there and it makes you numb from like the bust downwards. Best working epidurals, the way they work is you're aware you're having a contraction, but you can't feel the pain of the contraction. And that's really important when it comes to pushing. You need to be able to feel that you're having a contraction to push, but you shouldn't be able to feel the pain of it. Now, with an epidural, there are three things we need. We need a room, we need an anaesthetist, and we need a midwife. So sometimes it can be a bit of a delay in getting them, and it's purely because of logistically we need all three things. Sometimes we've got the anaesthetist, sometimes we've got a room but we haven't got a midwife, or vice versa. Sometimes we just need to get a room cleaned and then we can get done. Or sometimes the anaesthetist in theatre. We do try and get, make a plan in that it can be a case if we get you into another room, get you sorted and try and get you them as soon as possible if you feel you need them. Um, in the meantime though, sometimes some women have other options, they might have some pethogen until they're available to have an epidural, um, but it just depends on how you feel and what you want to do. If you're really keen for an epidural as well, just make that quite clear when you come in, just so that we can make a bit of a plan and expect you, what, you know, where you're going to go and that you potentially need to go to labour ward. Um, next thing to mention, so um, things to do at home. So in early labour, as I said, we do recommend trying to stay at home for as long as possible, especially because if some people live quite far away, so that thing of coming in and then being sent home again is really disheartening. It's not good for your oxytocin levels to bring these contractions on, but also it can, it can just be your own comfort as well. So silly things as in if you want to change your pyjamas or you want to you know, have some food, it's your own kitchen, own sort of, you know, make yourself a cup of tea. Um, and it can be really good for those early labours, early part of labour, where you're having contractions and they're on and off, stopping and starting. So things to try at home, paracetamol. So you can take one gram of paracetamol every four hours, um, but no more than um, eight tablets, so four grams in 24 hours. A bath, a bath is really good. 
Um, it depends if you're a bath or a shower a person. So some people prefer the shower because they can spray it on their back and they can put it on their front if they're getting low down period pains. But a bath can really help as well. So you can just literally sit in the bath and keep topping up the water, keep it nice and warm because it can really help with that. And um, some people get like, back pain, so a um, hot water bottle can be really good for um, the back pain. And um, also as well, just trying to keep nice and mobile. Um, that can help as well. Massage is really good. Um, a birthing ball, um, so you can get them. They're like exercise gym balls. There's not specific ones you need in um, like maternity, but it's just a case of making sure that they're anti-burst and that you, they're pumped up enough and you're safe, you're not gonna roll off them. Another thing to mention is tennis machine. Um, you may have seen them or heard about them. They can be hired from certain places. If you just, if you look it up on the internet, they, you can be hired usually for about six weeks. Things like places like mother care or boots, they can hire them out to you. And how tennis machines work is they're muscle stimulation. So you get four pads, they go on your back um, and they basically, every time you're having a contraction, you press button and it gives you a boost and it helps to stimulate your muscles. And how it works is if you say, for example, you bang, bang your leg and then you rub your leg, that sensation of rubbing meets the, your brain quicker than the pain sensors, and that's how the basically a tennis machine works. So some women find it really good at home just to use a tennis machine, just as more of a distraction, but also it can help with that back pain. Obviously, if you're getting in the bath, make sure you have the tennis machine off. And if you're coming in here and you're thinking, actually, I want to get in the pool, they can't, you can't put them together. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, but eat, make sure as well at home you're eating and drinking, uh, make sure you're going for a wee nice and regularly as well. Some rest as well, so lots of mobilisation, so getting up and about in good positions, but actually make sure you get some rest as well. And if these contractions are coming every 15 minutes, that, and it's night time, try and sleep in between, okay? Obviously if it's daytime and they're coming every two or three minutes, or nighttime and every two or three minutes, we don't expect you to have some sleep, but if you can get a bit of sleep, try and get some rest, because it's, it's difficult to say exactly how long the labours will go on for, and if you can manage to rest, it's really important that you do get some rest. And um, also as well, it's really important about partners and visitors. Because of COVID-19, we're keeping it as one birth partner only, and only one visitor on the ward. They ideally have to be the same person and there is no swapping between so lots of women are coming in with just their partner and that's absolutely fine and then their partner is their one visitor on the postnatal ward you cannot swap between and even if you've got a doula or an independent midwife it's literally just one person so some people are like actually i'd just rather have my mum or i'd rather have my partner or whoever you would like to have but it's just one person and that is across the board that is on the um, on the birth center that is the same on labor ward so it's really important that you understand that now just so that you can make a plan of if you had originally planned on having more than um, more than one that is really important protecting mums babies but also our staff as well just to make sure that everyone ideally is protected from COVID-19 and that we can keep providing safe care for yourselves and um, last thing to mention so about what to bring with you now it's really difficult to say exactly how long you'll be staying in hospital, but it is a case of what you do need to bring. There are lots of lists of NHS websites of what you need to bring, um, but for yourself, we basically say um, some pyjamas, something comfortable that you want to potentially labour in, that you're going to wear. Don't worry about towels and stuff, because we've got things here, toiletries, bring for yourself, lots of snacks, lots of you know drinks and stuff, things that are easy to eat in labour, because it's really good to keep your energy levels up. Um, just so, so sanitary pad, uh, sanitary pads, clean underwear, just whatever you want to, you know, be around in afterwards as well. And um, obviously, if you're going to be in for a few days for whatever reason, your partner uh, can go home and bring stuff in if you feel you need, uh, you know, extra stuff. So don't feel like you need to bring absolutely loads of things. Loads of things for the baby. We suggest lots of hats, vests, baby grays, and nappies. Cotton wool as well. And we've obviously we can help you with changing nappies and bits and bobs. But just make sure you've got some nappies with you as well. Um, with babies and mums, we say ideally try and keep them in separate bags, so two bags, so one for mum, one for baby, just so it's easier logistically. If, for example, baby had to go to neonatal unit, baby stuff is all in a separate bag and can be handed to the nurses and everyone can know that that's baby stuff. And vice versa, if you're, you know, if you're having help in the shower and one of the midwives says, oh, I'm just going to get you some clean underwear, we know exactly that's in that bag and we know what's there. So it's just for yourself as well. And for your partners as well, make sure they know where you've packed things in the bag, because often mums will have packed them perfectly, but then poor partners are dishing through them trying to find stuff afterwards. So it's just really important that you both have packed them together and you know what's in there, and also you know what to add in during the, you know, for the, like when you're nearer to labour. So things like your snacks, add them in later, and things like phone charges and other stuff like that, make sure you've got them just so you're not worrying, but also just put them in nearer, nearer the time.